Yes, sir. Whether it be by the grave or in the air. Amen. Yes. Either way, it's going to be all right. Be all right. Either way. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Well, I found the Lord one day, and I took him as my Savior. Cast my thoughts with the chosen few, and started out for heaven. Well, soon I was forsaken. My friends left me one by one.
Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus another round of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glad I'm saved. So glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. God surely has blessed us all. He ain't done us nothing but good. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good God and greatly to be praised, the Bible says. And even things that are evil or against us, I mean, knows God has a way of turning it around. And when it's all said and done, it works out for our benefit. You know that? It's very, very advantageous for anybody to give their, uh, their life and their soul over to Jesus. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll show you where the still waters are. He'll show you where the green pastures are. And I tell you what, it's a life of peace. It's a life of victory. And it's all because we surrender ourselves to Jesus. Hallelujah. How many loves him tonight? How many loves Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. He first loved you. Amen. Let's just reach our hands towards heaven. Let's worship him tonight. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, his love for us. Hallelujah. You can be seated just for a moment. Hallelujah. So good to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah, at this time, we'll get ready and take up tonight's offering. So if the offering takers will make their way to the front tonight, let's give Sister Kathy a hand as she comes to sing tonight. Let's make her welcome tonight. Hallelujah. I was lost, but you knew.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Greatly to be praised tonight. Hallelujah. Sister Pam, will you testify tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's make Solid Rock Trio welcome tonight. Come on up front, Brother Johnny. Hallelujah. Welcome, Sister Keith. Give her a hand tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless How many will never forget the day or the night that the Lord saved you? You know, He put something in our hearts and He changed us, and we'll never, 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 till the day we die, be the same. Because you can never forget that time when He came into your heart. And I never shall forget that day. Amen. I never shall forget the day. All of the burdens of my soul, they rolled away. It made me happy, happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for He's everything to me. And I never shall forget that day. When all of the burdens of my soul, they rolled away. It made me happy, happy, glad, and free. 
will save you, friends. You give me peace and joy within. For I never shall forget the day. We're all of the burdens of my soul. They rolled away. For it made me happy. Happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Long years ago, when I was out in sin. Would you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. While we remain standing tonight, let's go to the book of First uh, Samuel tonight. Amen. God's a mighty good God. First Samuel chapter 17 tonight. Hallelujah. Give God one more shout of praise, would you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight. Appreciate God's mercy and all of his goodness. Amen. All that he's been to us. I want to preach to you tonight, and, and, and you know this story well, but I'd like to try to bring out some things to you to, to, to help you to see some things maybe that we've not seen in the past or just to stir up that which is in you tonight. Amen. I know it's every now and then we need just a stirring in our, in our hearts tonight. I know that we need just a, just a, 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 just a, 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 a God just to come by and visit us one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. God, how many knows that God's a mighty good God? Amen. Amen. And um, I, I want to share this with you. And I, Daniel, I'll give you that verse there. But I, I, if you'll go back to verse number, amen, uh, go back to 17 and verse 1. Just go back to verse 1. Let me read you a couple scriptures here tonight. And, and then we'll, I want you to look at this. And uh, how many of y'all ever have giants in your life? <laughs> the Bible says now when the Philistines were gathered together, when the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, they were gathered at Sakoch, which is belongeth to Judah, and pitched between, Shach, uh, I'm not pronouncing that right, but in Rephidim. Amen. Next verse, please. And Saul and his men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And, there, and the Philistines stood on one mountain, on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, whose name 
named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. That means he was somewhere right at ten foot tall. Now, that may not seem like a big, tall guy. Ten foot don't sound very high. Amen. But you start looking up to ten foot, and you realize that's a hunk of a man. Somebody shout amen. And then it gives a little description of, of, of this man. And the Bible says he had a helmet of brass on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of his coat was 5,000 shackles of brass. Now, when you look at all of this, Amen. And, and it really, it takes eight verses to describe Goliath and, and the, the coat of mail. Amen. His coat of mail weighs somewhere in a, a neighborhood of 125 pounds. Amen. Next verse. And his greaves of brass up on his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear had weighed about 600 shackles of honor, about 15 The head of his spear weighed right at 15 pounds. And then there was one bearing a shield went before him. Now, he was a mighty, mighty warrior. Somebody shout amen. And his, his ultimate purpose was to defeat. Amen. There's a spirit to defeat. Amen. And everyone that's seen this felt the effects of this giant. Amen. But God's a good God. Sister Minnie, say the prayer of the reading of the word. You give God a great big shout of praise tonight. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, I just want to share a couple of things with you tonight. And, um, and it's, um, I really don't want to talk about the giant. I, I, I want to talk about something else. But I just want you to understand, amen, the, 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 the power of this man. And the Bible says he was a giant. And he had a giant spear. He had a giant shield, and he had a, a giant hatred of God's people. How many knows the devil always hates God's people? Now, when you look at this and everything that's going on, and then, amen, you know the story, and there was nobody, amen, amen, uh, uh, Goliath made the, the threat, if you come and fight me and, and you win, we'll be your servants, and if I prevail, then you surrender and be our servants, and all this went on, and everybody was in disarray, and they were, they were dismayed, and they were fearful, and they were afraid, and amen, that morning, amen, when Jesse got up, he said, I want uh, David to go down and to check on the brethren, bring word back, amen, how the brethren's firing, how everything's going on, Take them some food and bring me back, amen, some word of how my, how my sons are doing. And the Bible says in verse 20, Daniel, amen, as we start there tonight, now look at this, amen. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shout for battle. Somebody shout amen. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Now they were on one side and they were ready to fight, but no fighting was ever happening. Y'all listen to me? Amen. A lot of times in our lives, we, amen, we go, but we're really not fighting. Amen. 
And David left the, his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Amen. And as he talked with them, uh, behold, came up the champion of the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake to the and, uh, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Amen. All the men of Israel heard these, amen, for 40 days. But amen, David heard them, and there was a different reaction than every other man in that camp. Are you listening to me for just a moment tonight? Amen. There's a time that you've got to listen differently than what the flesh is projecting to you and I. Amen. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. Oh, my God. And the men of Israel said, uh, have you seen this man that's coming? Now, I don't know, amen, that was just a, a, a statement because nobody could miss that 10-foot warrior out there. Have you seen what they were saying? Was Have you seen the dominion of this man? Have you seen the statue of this man? Have you seen the abilities of this man? Have you seen this man that strikes fear in all of our hearts? Now, look at this. This, I, want to bring, I want to bring this out for a moment. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be. Now listen to what they was concerned with. Amen. The man that killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel or he don't have to pay no more taxes. Now, do you see what these men were looking at? If somebody would be willing to go out there, amen, and fight, this is what our king Saul will do for you. But David wasn't interested as much as what the king of Saul could do as much as what the king of heaven would do. Anybody hear me? Amen. Now look at this because it's really important when you look at some of these things uh, in the scriptures, uh, amen, and how David was really bewildered uh, at the lack of courage uh, among the men of Israel. Uh, and he was just saying, hey, uh, I believe there's more here, uh, amen, than just getting riches uh, or getting a king's daughter uh, or getting a little blessing out of this thing. Uh, there's something more about you being in church tonight uh, than just being here. Can I get a witness in here? You in the place that God can give a miracle. You in the place that God can give you strength for another day. God, you in the place tonight that God is able to give you a word that strengthen you to walk out there one more day and say, devil, you may be big, but I'm not looking for this or that. I'm looking under God tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now look at this tonight. When I begin to study this out, and amen, I preached this several different times, but not this same message, not in this in this contents. But what I want to get to you tonight is, uh, amen. But they were more concerned uh, with with earthly gifts. Uh, they were more concerned about themselves. Now, this is Satan's one of his ultimate goals is to get us concerned more about us than what we're the purpose of what we're supposed to be here for. Can I get a witness now? Now look at this tonight. Amen. And when David went down there, um, in verse, no, let's go down to verse 28. Amen. And David began to talk to these men. Uh, amen. And Elab, his eldest brother, heard when David, when he spake to the men. Amen. What David did, you know, he went down and got them men stirred up. <laughs> he stirred their hearts. Amen. And Eliab, it, it angered him, uh, and he said, Why cometh you down hither, and whom to, as I left those few sheep, amen, the wilderness? Uh, I know the pride and the notice of thy heart, that thou come down, that thou might see battle. But listen, here's what I want to bring out to you. And David just said, My God, man, uh, can I speak without y'all getting upset? Amen. And David said, What have I done now? Is there 
not a cause. Uh, and I want to preach just a few minutes again tonight. Uh, amen. Uh, listen to me. Uh, amen. There is a cause uh, in our lives tonight. Uh, there is a reason and a purpose here tonight for action. Uh, the devil's on a war path. Uh, the devil is to kill, steal, uh, and we need to rise up. Uh, it ain't time to sit down. Uh, it ain't a time uh, to get discouraged. Uh, it's a time to get a cause uh, in your life tonight. Amen. To pull and to push and to stand one with another and strengthen one another. You don't come to church to sit there just to get nothing. How many believes that tonight? Tell your neighbors there are not a cause in here. Amen. You know that. Amen. Everybody needs a cause. Amen. Everybody needs a reason. Everybody needs reason for action. Uh, those four lepers sat there on the side outside the city walls and they looked at one another. They had been fed. They brought food to them before, but they said there's no food in the city. Uh, amen. The enemy's down the road. Uh, but if we sit in this place, uh, there's a cause to get up. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Some of us, uh, my God, uh, amen, needs to get up uh, and fight. We've got to get up. We can't sit around and wait on everybody else. Amen. We can't sit around and wait. I don't have enough strength for it all. Nobody does. Amen. It's time that, amen. And it's time that we pray one for another, stand one for another. But it's time that we all stand together like we have never stood in the hour that we're, anybody preaching with me here tonight? That's what brings a cause. We got a cause tonight by the grace of God. We've got a cause tonight. We've got a reason for action. If for our homes and our families and our marriages and our children and amen and the generations to come, if the Lord doesn't come back, can I get a witness in here? I know we're facing giants uh, with, a, with giant obstacles uh, and giant hatred, uh, but I want you to understand one thing. Uh, I've got me a cause tonight uh, by the grace and the mercies of God, uh, hallelujah, to preach a name uh, that you can't be saved uh, in any other name except the name of Jesus to preach about a name that's above every name tonight. The devil don't like it, but I've got a cause to stand tonight. How many of y'all got a cause to stand tonight? If we realize how many the devil, amen, amen, is trying his best to destroy. Did y'all hear me? There's a giant in the land. That's not really what I want to preach about. I just want to listen, folks. If you've got the cause, the giant's got problems. <laughs> huh? I said the giant's got problems if you've got a cause. Amen. Now, David said, you guys talking about getting the king's daughter and about getting some money and, amen, about getting set free in your household and your, your mom and daddy's house free in Israel. But, amen, i got a cause here tonight because, amen, you are defined the name of the Lord God uh, and the armies of God. Now, let's get, look at this. Uh, amen, they was down there at Judah. Amen. And do you realize the whole nation of Israel had stopped? The king and everybody had stopped right there. Nothing was happening for 40 days and for 40 nights. Nothing. Everything was at a standstill because of Goliath. See, Satan loves to get you to stand still so long that you don't want to do it anymore. Amen. I'm preaching to somebody here tonight. It's time to rise up with a cause. Somebody shout a cause tonight. Now, you'll know this. You know what the cause is. Uh, it's a purpose. It's a reason for action. Uh, amen. Uh, it's a reason, amen, to do something. Uh, amen. And not just sit and say, well, I wonder who's going to do it. Who's going to pray? Brother Wayne, can you pray? Brother Seth, can you do all the shouting? And you do all the, but we all get together. Come on, somebody. And when they sing and sing, make that joyful noise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Clap that hand. 
Raise that hand. There's a cause tonight. We have to advance. We can no longer stay on one side of the mountain. We got to be more than conquerors tonight. Amen. By the love of God tonight. Amen. How many of y'all need a cause in your life? Amen. Get a relationship that'll draw you near to God. Every one of us has been in, amen, on one side of the mountain and we backed up. But I believe tonight that there's a stirring in the heavenlies tonight. That God is saying, amen, go forward by the power of God. Come on and give him a shout of praise in here. Tell your neighbor God's good tonight. Amen. David said, ain't there, ain't there, some, ain't there a reason for some action to go on here? Can't somebody go out there? Well, you'll get the king's daughter and you'll get, a, you'll get, some, you'll get some money and You'll get your taxes canceled. That's all they thought about. I won't keep it, I won't keep that going for a minute. Amen. They tried to encourage each other with something that couldn't encourage you. Somebody shout amen. I don't care how much money I get. If I get killed, I ain't won't do me no good. <laughs> That's what they said. What do to get married if I ain't got if I'm dead? What good is it to be free if I'm dead? Well, let's just don't monkey with it. Let's just leave it. How many of y'all just want to leave some things alone? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Is there not a cause? We can't get around Goliath. We've got to face him. Is there a cause tonight? How many of y'all got a cause tonight? Yes, How many of you got a reason? How many of you got a reason to get up? How many of y'all got a reason to fight? How many of you got a reason to pray tonight? Come on, somebody. How many of y'all got a reason to stand up and say, Devil, I'm going to stand against the spirits that's trying to destroy us by the power of the Holy Ghost. I see people every day. Amen. And brother, let me tell you, you've got to keep the joy of the Lord. You've got to keep your spirit stirred. You can't let it get depressed. You can't let it get suppressed. You've got to skin up and say, Praise God in the I don't feel like it. Amen. The flesh don't want me to. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He's good on Monday. He's good on Tuesday. He's wonderful on Wednesday. He's great on Thursday. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've got to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know. I know what I'm a preaching tonight. I know how the powers of hell are. But I know about a God. I still know about a God tonight. They're still more than able. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When David went down there, David was not a military man. He had not been trained in, in warfare. He was not in the army. He was just, as Brother Tim would say, a civilian. Somebody shout amen. Let me, re I'll rephrase that a little more. He was just a nobody. His brother thought he was a nobody. When, when they rehearsed the words, in the, and David said, well, I, any of us should be able to go down and whoop that devil because he's defying Israel, and he's defying the armies of God. And, amen. He's reproaching us. Um, amen. And, 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 and Goliath, when he cursed Israel or defied Israel, he was saying is, you trust in a God that you don't believe in. If he's that great of a God, come out here and fight me. Your God will fight for you. And what Goliath was saying is, Israel, you really don't have a God. You may have some kind of a, a thing that says it's God. But he isn't, there's no God there. How many times the devil challenge you? There ain't no God in your life. Tell you that God don't care for you like he does somebody else. Am I preaching, y'all? You made too many mistakes. Y'all preaching with me? You've disobeyed God more than anybody else. You ever been there? 
and Satan challenges us. But you got to understand, David had come, I don't want to say out of revival. He had come out of the wilderness with the sheep, been in revival. <laughs> in a relationship. See, that song that Sister Jean sung tonight, I never shall forget that day. It touched my life. It changed me. And I can always, always got something to thank you for. When I think of Calvary, sister, as you sung tonight, thanks to Calvary. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many times have you been to Calvary, Brother Wayne? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. That's where my victory's at at Calvary. Somebody shout hallelujah. I take Calvary and the, and the empty tomb together, and I walk out and say I'm the winner because of Calvary and the empty tomb. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. We get ready to celebrate this Easter resurrection, amen, resurrection Sunday, amen. Thank God for Calvary, but thank God for that Sunday morning when he got up and got out of that grave by the power of God. Can I get a witness in here? Now, I've got a cause, and I've got a reason by the power of the Holy Ghost tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Give me just a couple more minutes tonight. Now, here's the thing that happens. Daniel, go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 18 and 19. Exodus 20. I don't think I give you that scripture, but I want you to go there. Exodus chapter 20. Now, look, look at this. Listen. God told the children of Israel, get prepared, that God was going to talk, come down and talk to them on Mount Sinai. They, stepped, they roped it off. Animals couldn't go up on uh, to the base of the mountain. No, nobody could go up that mountain. They would die if they did. And there was thundering, and there was lightning, and there was trembling, and the Mount Sinai itself shook like it was in an earthquake because of the presence of God, of a holy God, came down upon that mountain. And God began to speak to the people. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpets and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Now, Satan loves us today. Aren't you glad that we don't have to be afraid anymore? You don't have to be afraid of God anymore. See, this is the relationship that you and I need. Oh, God, help us all. Now watch this, 19, Daniel. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. See, they didn't want, they didn't want a relationship with God. Because, amen, they wanted it their way. How many believe that we've got church tonight, amen, that we're doing it our way? But, oh, God, can we do it your way? God, I want a relationship. Now, David had a relationship with God. How you know? He said the same God. The, he, he knew God. Can I get a witness in here? He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He knew what shepherd was. Uh, he knew that, amen, the, 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 the working of a shepherd. Uh, he knew the love between the shepherd uh, and a sheep. Uh, he knew the difference between a shepherd uh, and a harling. Can I get a witness in here? Folks, uh, if you're going to pray, it's time to pray. If it's time to get on fire, it's time to get on fire. If it's time to get stirred up, it's time to get stirred. I know everything else, but it's time to rise up. Is there not a cause? Somebody ought to shout. Is there not a reason tonight? Is there not a reason? Is there not a reason? Is there not a reason? Oh, God. David said he's defying us. He's saying that Israel really doesn't have a God. But David had a heart for God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now watch this. Amen. See, Satan builds strongholds in our lives. Anywhere that he can try to put a fortress to stop us, he does that. Sickness, poverty, ever what it might be. 
any kind of sin, anything he can do. Am I preaching to y'all tonight? And he builds that thing to stop us from going forward in God. You're going to hear a lot about this maybe in the next little while, I don't know. But we've got to go forward like we've never went. Come on, son, get up. Come on, you got to get up. You got to get up. I remember when these are just things that I'm not bound to the past, but I remember when that we, we, we stayed eight days in Lexington and, and they didn't do anything there about any of her broke bones really. And uh, her legs and her knees were in such a bad shape. And uh, I remember on a Friday night, we got there on a Thursday evening, and on a Friday night about 10 o'clock, we'd done, we were done the bed or sleep or 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock, Somerset time. And somebody came in a room, flipped the light on, this big guy. He said, I'm Dr. So-and-so. And he walked over to the bed. He pulled the cover back on her leg. And he tucked that leg. He put one hand up above the knee, one down below the knee, and he twisted it. I come up out of that seat and I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, it's all right. I know what I'm doing. He's getting ready to feel the sting. <laughs> I don't know how hard it has stung, but he'd get, he'd note it. Somebody shout amen. Oh, God, y'all just want to laugh a little bit. Everyone, we all need to hear a little laughter. And uh, he fooled around there, twisted around. And uh, he looked at us and he said, I'm going to do surgery. I've got to get her mobile. We can't keep her laying here. She done been laying flat on her back for 10 days, and she had not got up under no sun. She laid flat on her back. She couldn't lay on her side because of her back being broke. She couldn't get up. She couldn't go to the bathroom. She couldn't do nothing. She laid flat on her back for 10 days and nights. He said, I've got to get her mobile. The longer she lays here, the harder it's going to be. See, every time you sit down and sit there a while, it's harder to get up. Do you realize if David hadn't come down there 50 days and it's still been there? Holler, man, won't you go out there? You need a wife. You get some money. Well, won't you go? <laughs> David says, they're not a cause. He said, he said, there is no God of Israel. As he said, I, I do surgeries, but he said, there's nobody, there's surgery room is opened. Sunday, he said, I don't, I don't work on Sundays. I, I don't do surgeries on Sunday. But he said, amen, because of this case, he said, because, he said, I, I'll do it on a, that I ain't got nobody before you, nobody after you. And ever how long it takes, we're going to do something about this. See, there's a time in your life, everybody say, get up. <laughs> Listen, amen. Can, can I prophesy to you? In this world, you're going to have troubles all your life. I, that comes true right there, did not it? In this world, things are not going to go the way you want them to go. I wish Murphy had never put that law. Somebody shout amen. I don't know who Murphy is, but I don't like him. Somebody shout amen. But anyhow, amen. But Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation and you shall have these trials. But be of good cheer. I've overcome everything that's against you by the power of God. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And friend, let me tell you, you got to get up. Amen. You got to get up. Do you understand? You got to get up. Just stay there. I'm going to use you. You're going to walk, boy. And... Uh, Amen. They did the surgery on the on the Sunday, and oh, they brought her back to the room, and oh man, she was out of it, and she was hurting in pain, and she was a moaning and a groaning, and amen, and all these kinds of things. And a couple of days later, they came in, they began to check, and then they said, "We're gonna get you up like tomorrow." She on her feet for like 14, 15 days. 
And when she sat up on the side of the bed, she couldn't even hardly sit up on the side of the bed because her head swam so bad. She had to sit up there for a while. But they said, we've got to get you up. They put that belt around her. Amen. They get her a walker that she can put that arm in. They put that shell on her. Y'all hear what I'm telling you tonight? Amen. That broke back. But you've got to walk. You've got to get started. All we're going to ask you to do is go from here to the door. <laughs> and you know, it took, it seemed like eternity to get her from the bed up to the walker and to stand there and to get her, mo her, her stability and her mobility enough, amen, before she could walk. Listen, folks, the longer you sit, amen, the devil knows the heart is going to get up and come get through. Is there not a cause to get up right now? Is there not a reason to get up right now for some action and say, devil, we going on with Jesus. Hallelujah. We going to stand together. We going to pray. Can I get a witness? We going to hold your hands up, buddy. Amen. You going to make it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Don't, amen. Raise that head high. Cause, amen. You've got victory in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy. Anybody preaching here with me tonight? Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, is there not a cause? Give God uh, a great big shout. Thank you, son. Uh, hallelujah. Is there not a cause tonight? Somebody shout. Out, yes, there's a cause tonight by the grace of God. Amen. Everybody shout a cause tonight. Amen. David said, Amen. My cause is this. You're looking for personal gain with this and that and the other. Amen. But my cause is the advancement of the kingdom of God. Can I get a witness in here? David's brethren lost their vision. What were they down there in that valley for? What were they on the other side of that mountain for? And the fish, what did they go down there for? There was no fighting there. Y'all hear me? You're going to have to fight, folks. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to stand. You're going to have to get up. Somebody get up. Thank you. Somebody get up. Somebody just get up. Amen. It takes a little effort, but look how blessed you are. You was able to get up. Now, there was a victory in that tonight. Amen. I just want to teach you, amen, and preach to you for a few moments tonight to let you know there is a cause. Uh, give God a shout of praise uh, and shout, uh, there is a cause. Uh, amen. There's a commitment in my life. Uh, I'll go fight Goliath. Uh, I'll fight him, the same God uh, that brought me out, uh, the same God that forgive me uh, of every sin, uh, every transgression, uh, the same God uh, that spared our lives, uh, the same God. Uh, there's a purpose for your life here tonight. Amen. God didn't spare your life to just barely get through the same. Amen. David said the God that gave me the bear. Now watch this. Saul, Saul I, I, I'm sure he meant well. I'm sure he did. <laughs> I ain't got nobody here little than I am. Come here, Canyon. Now, do you know, according to a tradition, in that Middle East, most of those, their skin was either dark, olive color, and very black hair. They say that David's hair was the reason they called him ruddy. He didn't look like the rest of them. Well, glory. Glory. Now, Saul meant well. And Saul was head and shoulder. Saul was a big man himself. Saul was over seven foot tall himself. Saul was a big man. He was head and shoulders above all the men of Israel. And Saul said, if you're going to go fight him, lad. But you know what Saul did? This is what that stirs my heart. When Saul looked at David, he saw something about David that he didn't see about nobody else. He saw a commitment. He saw a dedication. That, was, that didn't mean that David was lived a perfect, but he saw him loving God more than himself. And Saul said, son, you can go. I'll let you go, but take my armor. 
Put it on, son. Put it on. Now, I feel big. I feel real big right now. <laughs> but what can David, what can David do in this? It wasn't his. It wasn't made for him. David said, Saul, I appreciate your offer, but I've not proved it. I've not tested this. This won't work for me like it works for you. Come on, somebody. Nobody else's praise will work for your praise. Your shout won't, amen, amen. Somebody else's shout won't do it for you. Your amen won't do it. Come on, somebody. You realize what you got tonight? And David said, I'll go out there. David took that little, what we would call a toy sling, a toy weapon. And he got one down that valley. And he looked at that brook. There you go, son. Get you five of them. Hallelujah. And he got him five smooth stones. Now, I'm going to tell you this too. Amen. When that huge man called Goliath looked at what they sent out there to him, it angered him. Amen. You know what they said? What are you trying to do, belittle me? What are you trying to do, make me, am I a dog? What do you think I am to send me this out here to fight me? God, somebody shout hallelujah. But how many knows that your prayer will intervene? Your prayer will stand the gap. Your prayer will make a difference. Your support will make the difference. Oh, my God, I'm preaching to some. Anybody want this tonight? Anybody heart you want to burn in your night? Say, God, amen. I can do something. Amen. Almost done. Hallelujah. Y'all know the story well. And he went down there and he got those, he got those stones. And, and Goliath looked and said, come to me. I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air. I'll, let the, I'll feed your carcass to the wild dogs. Everything out there. David said, let me tell you something. You come with a sword. You come with a spear. You come with a shield. You come all armored up in the flesh, but I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Somebody ought to shout yes. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. I'm coming in the name of Jehovah. I'm coming in the name of Israel. I'm coming in the name of a God that still fights the battle, that still brings victory. I'm serving a God. I come to you, amen, and I'm not only going to kill you, I'm going to cut your head off. Hallelujah. And David got that sling, and he put a stone in the sling. And I hear it, I believe it said, uh, Woo! Uh, look what the Lord is doing. Uh, amen. And he let it go. Uh, amen. As, so, uh, as Goliath, uh, amen, had that bare spot. Uh, amen. The Holy Ghost uh, directed that stone uh, right there. Uh, and it knocked him down. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I said, There's a cause. Uh, nobody was betting on David. Uh, but God said, uh, If I still be for you, if I'm for you, come on, somebody. Uh, have you got? a cause tonight. If we ever have a cause, we need one right now. We've got to get a hold of this thing. Will our church die? Will our people die? Will people, will people miss something? We've got to get a cause tonight. Somebody shout amen. Thank you, son. As I close tonight, as they prepare, come to the music. Listen to me. You know the story. Amen. The, the giant fell. David ran to him, and he didn't have any kind of weapons, and he took Goliath's own sword, and he cut the head of Goliath off. The most amazingest defeat that anybody had ever seen, because God was in it, and somebody had a cause, somebody had a reason to stop. I've got a reason tonight. And Calvary is the reason why. Can I get a witness in this house? And Calvary is the reason why. I stand to your feet all over this building tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hand and say, God, stir my cause. Stir my, my love for you, my unction for you. Come on. Come on, ask God. Amen, to help you even, amen, to be stirred, to rededicate, amen, to get a deeper commitment tonight to the things of God. Amen, I have to do that. Hallelujah. Come on, reach out to him right now. Come on, reach out right now and say, God, 
Help me tonight. Come on, that's it. Lift your voices to him. Help me tonight, God. Amen. We're not just preaching about a giant and a boy. We're preaching about the power of God. Come on, let's just weep for that deep commitment tonight. Let's have a plan. Amen. Let's have a purpose tonight. Amen. Let's kill some giants. Amen. By the power and the grace of an almighty God tonight. Oh, it's time. Come on, that we run. Amen. To the battle and say, God. Amen. It's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for tonight. God, everything I got's worth fighting for. God, everything I've got worth fighting for. Help me to fight for it tonight, God. We've all jeopardized things, but come on, reach out to him right now and say, God, God, I'm here. God, I'm here to fight. God, I'm here to fight tonight. God, I'm here because of a cause. Amen. Stand in the gap for somebody else tonight. Stand for your children. Stand for a husband or wife. Come on, call somebody's name out to God tonight. Amen. That's going through, amen, the uh, the torments of their life right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ask God to heal right now. Ask God to save. Ask God to strengthen tonight. Ask God to help us, amen, not to go in the wrong direction any longer, but amen, that we'll get up by the power of God. We must have a cause. We must have a purpose, amen. We've got a cause to fight. We've got a cause to stand. Stand for God tonight. Don't be ashamed. Let's stand for him tonight like we've never stood. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Come on, love him tonight. I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by. I'm going to claim his promises. He will provide. Come on, just love him tonight. Young people, you need a cause tonight. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us tonight? That's what David was saying. We've got a cause. How many of y'all got a cause in this building tonight? How many of y'all got a reason? How many of y'all got a reason? I've got a reason. I've got a reason tonight. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me, go back to D. Go to D. Come on, just rev him tonight. This altar's open. If you need strength tonight, this altar's open. We'll pray with you. Stay with you. If you're lost, this altar's open to you tonight. I'll stand for Jesus. Let the world.